ready. Okay, Recording in progress. I'd like to call this meeting to order and state this meeting is being held in compliance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. It was properly noticed mm -hmm. and posted and certified by the clerk. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Ms. Roberts. Here. Mr. Schindler. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Young. Here. Mayor Francis. Here. Please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. There are no proclamations, and uh, let's start with the committee reports. Don. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just some items that are coming up on Tuesday, next Tuesday, October twelfth. From 1 to 3 p.m., we do have the journey bus will be in the parking lot of 47 Hopat Chung Road. So if anyone needs any resources from the county, uh, that would be your time uh, to come if you want to do the, the uh, journey bus. If not, uh, we're always here at the community center to help connect you with whatever you need. Uh, next Wednesday, the 13th from 5 to 8 p.m., we have Hope and Serenity Recovery Meeting. Um, anyone is allowed and welcome to come to that for anything that you might be struggling with. Uh, the following day on October 14th, we have the Center for Prevention coming to the community center um, for continuing education and resources for drug abuse, Narcan training and the like. That is from 3 to 7 p.m. And then Tuesday, October 19th, we have from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. the Seniors Caregiver Support Group. So if you're caring for a senior and you feel you need a little support or some resources as you're going it on your own, it can be very draining. Uh, we are here to offer resources on that as well. Also, I'd like to add to my community, my, my committee report, um, I'm hoping for the council's support and in uh, resolution 2021-140, the authorization to explore shared services through the DCA. I'm asking for your support to not move this resolution tonight. I feel that it is way too premature to involve the state before having any meetings with the four entities of our board. Those meetings have not happened yet. Until they do happen, until there is a full discussion with our board and with the four entities of our town, dispatchers, police, fire, EMTs, I don't think we should move to the state just yet. If for some reason going forward into the future, if, if efforts at communication do not come to fruition, or if communication for some reason breaks down, then we can always bring a resolution back. But because of the prematurity and nothing having been discussed or met with, please don't move the resolution tonight. Thank you. Mike, I think uh, I'm up, but you're on mute, by the way. Yeah, Brad, you're up. I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks, Don. I uh, just didn't know if you were commenting something else. But anyway, uh, all I wanted to go back to was uh, back on days and, and congratulate uh, the Recreational Committee and uh, everyone that was involved putting on that uh, event because I think it was very well received by the town. I'm not sure the number. I, I feel like we were north of at least 1,500 people there, and it was a beautiful day and well attended. And uh, just want to thank everybody that made that happen. That's it. Thank you. Rich, you're up. Okay. Um, I uh, have actually been away, so I don't have much to say, except uh, I did miss the pack on days, which I'm sad about, but I did hear that it was a great time. And uh, I'm going to congratulate the committee on, uh, on their efforts on putting that on. I think it was great from what I heard. 
That's it. Thank you, Rich. John, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, first of all, on Hopakon days, the Recreation Commission hasn't met since then. Um, however, most of the Recreation Commission was there helping out in one way or another. Um, it was a great day, as, as noted already. Uh, the weather cooperated very nicely. Municipal Alliance was there, um, you know, supporting anti or not supporting drugs, you know, with their anti-drug um, literature and so on. Uh, the Environmental Commission was there in, in full force. There was also a program, I think one of the sports programs, giving away free ices. I'm, I'm not sure who they were. Uh, but anyway, it was a great day. And, and the, uh, Kathy, uh, Kathy Millian and the rest of the recreation people did a great job. So kudos to them. Um, as far as a report from the Environmental Commission, kind of reviewed Hopakong days. Uh, and I'm going to put a plug in if you've ever seen an, any round magnets on the back of the car uh, that say littering is trashy. Those are from the Environmental Commission and there's a new order coming in. I didn't win, that's not the slogan I wanted. Um, the slogan I wanted was a little bit coarser. Um, at any rate, we talked about the new webpage coming up. Also the Eagle Scout project that's underway in the uh, um, mountain inlet. <clears throat> Uh, we talked about the rain garden, and we have a sign coming for that. We also had a little conversation about Witten Park, and of course, we talked about invasive species, the, the, um, the three most uh, common that we know of plant-wise are mugwort, the uh, Japanese knotweed, and, um, and of course, the, uh, the, uh, the bugs. Current one that's been accelerating a lot is the spotted lanternfly. <laughs> And from the Environmental Commission, pretty soon the uh, Beautification Committee will be at work doing some more work in the park. So that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, John. Ryan, you up? Hey, I've got a lot. Uh, all right, I'll start with the Chamber of Commerce. Our next Chamber of Commerce meeting is this Friday morning, uh, October 8th. Uh, the Sussex County Chamber of Commerce B2B breakfast is next Tuesday morning, October 12th. Uh, the Young Professionals of the Chamber of Commerce Oktoberfest is next Wednesday, October 13th. Uh, switching gears over to the Sussex County MUA. Uh, the next Sharps Disposal event is tomorrow, October 7th. The next Paper Shredding event is October 15th. Um, Dawn, I support your uh, idea to not move Ordinance 2021-140 tonight, and uh, I will support you that later on in the meeting. Uh, I'm going to ask for the council support on ordinance 23-2021. We have the final reading of Hakon Street vacation. Um, I've been in negotiations with the Northwood Community Association and the fire department, and we have some clarifications that will be added. Our attorney has reviewed them. I will read them into the public record as my motion when we get to that ordinance tonight. And I'm going to ask for your support on that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Jane, you're up. Uh, just the report that Tulsa is back in school as of Monday. Woo full days. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Um, I also had a question. Um, I know the Halloween party is this Sunday. Is there a rain date for the Halloween party? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okie dokie. And is there a way that we can get a calendar of events? Because it sounds to me like there's a lot going on at the community center. Is there a way we can get a, a, like a calendar put on the Facebook page or on the website where we have all these things posted? I've gotten a couple yeah. of emails about about where it's posted and I tell people to go to the Facebook page, but I don't know how much is. I know there's a lot of information that was just given. So, yeah, that's October pretty, 17th. It, it, it's pretty fluid. Uh, we'll try to do the best we can. We'll try to do it on, on our website, but I just spoke to Needy Club today and and some seniors that want to do some other stuff in, in the basement. And so uh, it's probably going to happen, but not happening yet. So it's hard to schedule things that are, are so, uh, are so current, but we'll try. Okay. And I would also like to throw in my support of tabling ordinate, uh, resolution 2021-140. That's all. Thank you. We're on administrative report. Excuse me, man. Yeah, a couple. Oh, October 17th is the rain date for the uh, um, Halloween festival, you know, the Thank you. 
There isn't a parade this year. No, no parade, just the party, right? Okay. Yes. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Ron, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, real quick, uh, the annual paving, we've locked in a date now of October 12th is the start date for all the paving. We're going to be starting on Durban. Um, the guys are going out door to door now with uh, doorknob announcements to all the residents that are affected by the areas that are going to have paving. We just ask that everyone pay attention to the patterns, to the traffic patterns. Be patient with our police officers that are, are directing that traffic and making it safe for everybody. And please, if you can take an alternate route, do that. And we certainly apologize for the inconvenience, but the outcome will be very nice to have these roads paved. We just want everybody to be cautious of, of what's going on and glad it's starting now. That being said, on the consent agenda, you're going to see two uh, resolutions um, for uh, DOT grants that came available here in the last month. This is discretionary funds that the DOT has made available, and they have communicated that they're going to award um, 50 grant opportunities throughout the state between the numbers of 750 and $1.5 million per um, area that receives the grants. So what we did, we put in a grant to get a uh, continuation of the sidewalk repairs like we've done. Uh, and this would cover from Popak Chong all the way down to Santa Fe where we left off for the, you know, the, the um, Safe Streets to Schools uh, program. And it'll also um, replace the sidewalks at the intersection of Durban and Flora on the right side of Flora, all going up Flora, all the way up to Francis. The, uh, the grant is for replacing all those sidewalks as well. And we've identified four more roads out of our, our software package that measures the road, the streetscape roads, that will be uh, applying for the grant to pay four more roads in the borough as well. Like I said, this is discretionary money the DOT has come up with. Um, the award of these grants are a little abnormal at best. It's not the norm of how they award it. They're kind of wanting the first ones to come in. They're going to look and they're going to award kind of as they go along. They're not taking all the awards and evaluating them against each other and awarding on that basis. They're going to do it kind of on a one on basis and award as they see fit. So. This resolution allows us to go out for those two grants that we've asked for. So that's all I have tonight, Mike. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to open to the public. So made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. An opportunity is given to the public for commentary. The comments are limited to one comment of no more than five minutes. Uh, and Valerie will take care of the clock. Thank you, Valerie. You're Ron, welcome. go ahead. I ask everybody that would like to make a comment or a question to the borough in your reactions button. Go down and hit the button and raise your hand. I'll know you're wanting to make a comment and I'll select them as I can get to them. So if you could do that, that would be greatly appreciated. And make sure you give the clerk your name. Sure. David Harris, you're up. You're muted, Dave. You're muted, Dave. Um, there you go. Well, okay. Um, I called. I called up um, Borough Hall today uh, to speak to Kathy, not to Kathy, to Valerie. And the answering machine still says Kathy. I went to the. <laughs> I went to the web page, and it's still signed Kathy for the. Uh, for 2019, and it's got a whole schedule there. It would seem that should be erased by now. Uh, and I'm just wondering why doesn't, uh, I, I've mentioned this about six months ago too, the fact that Kathy's name is still on the, answer, on the extension and everything. And it would seem a simple thing to take, to substitute Valerie's name for uh, Kathy's. Um, also, um, on the, on the, on the web page that I went to, I didn't, See the one I didn't know to go to Hapakon uh, Borough.org. I went to Hapakon Council and Mayor, and on there it says John Young and Rich Schindler's term expires 12:31:20, which I know is not true, but it's still on there. 
And um, I'm just wondering, is, is this a, a web that we shouldn't be having? I mean, because the information on there, it'll have the whole agenda for 2019. Uh, um, and the other thing was I called up a borough hall today to get the, to find out about the meeting, whether it was virtual or whether it was going to be face to face. And I, I got a message saying that the receptionist wasn't available. And uh, I it's about, and then I called about two hours later and I got the same message. And then I finally got, someone called me back, but I wasn't able to answer it because I was in a meeting. And I'm just wondering, I thought normally it seems like there's two people in the reception office. And I, uh, I was wondering what's going on there. But that's basically it. Uh, the notice of the meeting, it would seem, would be on um, Hapakong Borough uh, uh, Council and Mayor because that, that's of interest, you know, or maybe get rid of that uh, page. I'm, I'm confused by these uh, the, these web pages. Maybe you could uh, clear, clarify them. That's it. Thank you, David. Nick Dubron. Sorry. Let's start from the top here. Mr. Rodriguez, you're up. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel Rodriguez and Nine Skyline Drive. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank our council member, mayor, and everyone for uh, running for council. It's a very difficult thing to do, uh, to put yourself in that position uh, and to put yourself out in front of the public. Uh, second, a uh, little bit about myself. I've been a member of OPACON for well over 20 years. I have volunteered for the ambulance squad for over eight years. I acted as captain for two of those years during Sandy. I've been a volunteer firefighter in town for approximately four years. I'm a current law enforcement officer, not in our town. Uh, I'd like to thank a couple of our council members who have already uh, spoke about resolution 2021-140 in asking to table it. Uh, I would like all of our council members and mayor to vote no or to at least table this until we could get a more formal public hearing uh, where we actually get together. Uh, in regards to that uh, uh, resolution, uh, I would like to begin with when did uh, when did we start our fact finding in regards to this uh, resolution in the dispatch center? What is the actual cost to upgrade our dis current dispatch center? Uh, we want to see the proposal for the full cost that it's going to cost. I know council members have posted that it's going to be $3.6 million that they're requesting. Uh, and I believe that figure is close, more close to $2.9 million. Uh, how is it going to be broken down? How There's funds, there's grants, there's multiple. How are they requesting for us to be paid for? Uh, have there been any formal meetings with our police uh, chief? or the police department or any of the other emergency services in town. I know for a fact that the ambulance squad was not uh, asked and there have been public comments made that they were supporting this. Uh, and clearly they are not supporting this resolution. <clears throat> uh, I'd also, in regards to that as well, uh, when it comes to money, we're all about money. We're, and I agree, we should be saving money. We should be saving taxes on the taxpayer. Uh, what portion of the federal 901 funds do we receive as the town and what goes to the county? Are we receiving any? I know other towns have made resolutions to the county seeking out these funds. Uh, Newton and Vernon specifically have made resolutions asking the county for their portion of these funds. Have we? <clears throat> uh, another thing I would also like is to uh, at a formal public hearing meeting is to have the police chief of uh, the chief of police or a never member of the police department to publicly speak and let's hear their side in person rather than playing uh, back and forth. Let's hear directly from them and how it's directly going to affect them. Um, I know we want to break down stats uh, and everything. Our police department, our uh, dispatch center received over 83,000 calls uh, in a year span, right. our police department has handled from those calls over 17,000 calls. Our EMS department has handled over 1,000 calls. 
and our fire department has handled 230 calls uh, from all those calls that our dispatch center has received. Uh, as a past captain of ambulance squad, and especially during Sandy, I have dealt with our dispatchers directly. I have dealt with them in my current profession. Uh, they have saved lives of my coworkers. They have helped me out dramatically. During Sandy, if it wasn't for our dispatchers being in-house and being right there handling multiple phone lines because, as we know, cell towers were down, uh, communications, radio communications were down, we're only working locally. Uh, I even stepped in at the time and handled calls with them. Uh, if it wasn't for them, our town would have been cut off completely from the outside. Uh, have we looked into shared services with the, our surrounding neighbors of Stanhope and Byram? Currently, Stanhope is paying roughly $90,000 a year for their dispatch center to Sparta PD. Uh, Byram Township is paying roughly $130,000 to the county right now. Have we reached out to them to come to, to Hopakong? If we upgrade our center, it would be gladly we could take these towns in, even at a discounted rate of what they're paying now. And we could turn our dispatch center into gener uh, revenue generation. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, as we could clearly tell, uh, as you could, from comments that I've been making, we are much farther into this fact finding than, uh, that's been led on. And I would like to know what other towns have our council spoken to, uh, in regards to that's five minutes. Oh, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Um, uh, Rachel Rodriguez, you're up. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Rodriguez. I reside at Nine Skyline Drive. With regard to resolution 2021-140, what portion of our current county taxes fund the county dispatch center? What would be the contract term and price? How will that contract rate change upon the expiration of the initial contract? Has anyone spoken with surrounding town first responders who have switched to the county-based system for their opinions of its overall performance. The study has been in process, as we can see from public comments made, but this resolution states that on borough wishes to explore the possibility of shared services. Its effective date is October 6, 2021. Why is this resolution being brought to light now? We have over 800 signatures and more coming in to keep our dispatch center and dispatchers in Hopak on. The best foundation of every great emergency service team, police, fire, and EMS is the dispatchers themselves. They are often forgotten and looked at as a line item for town expenses, but they are an invaluable part of the team. Our Hopakon dispatchers ride with the Hopakon Police Department to learn the area. Our Hopakon dispatchers are aware of the paper roads that do not come up on a GPS, so knowing the area and navigating our police officers are essential. Hopakon dispatchers are primarily made up of Hopakon residents. They provide 24-7 video monitoring at our schools and local parks. They have over 90 years of combined experience. Our Hopakon dispatchers assist with officer safety within the station during prisoner processing, allowing additional officers to remain on the roads for the public. Our Hopakon dispatchers provide a 24-7 human presence at the police station in case of walk-in emergencies. Now, I feel cheaper isn't always better, but if you were given the choice, would you pick the cheaper surgeon with minimal education to perform your life-saving surgery, or would you pay a little bit more to pick the surgeon with the most experience and knowledge to save your life? Thank you. Next up, Ron. All right, let's see here. Nancy G, you're up. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Nancy Gonzalez. I live in the Glasser area of Hopakong. Um, I am on here. I'm going to make it quick. Um, what Rachel said, I second that to the hundredth there. Um, I want to mention uh, these Zoom meetings. I understand we need to do what we need to do um, due to COVID and all that stuff, but I think that uh, we should have in person. Uh, meetings. We'll wear masks, we'll social distance, do whatever we need to do in order to uh, address all the situations that are happening in our town. Um, 
or so all other surrounding towns are doing it that way. So I just think that the Zoom thing is just a little bit too uh, cold, in my opinion. Um, people should just be there in person. Um, a picture is a thousand words. So um, the next thing for me is the uh, dispatcher um, situation, 2021-140. Uh, um, I think they're very essential. I don't think it should even be a thought in anyone's head to try to uh, eliminate them or cut them out or anything like that. They are very needed, especially in the area where I am, where uh, even the light company and the cable company, they don't even know where to find our, our houses or our roads as it is. I can only imagine um, an emergency situation. Um, also myself, I've had a few emergencies. Um, I work at the Glasser Post Office and I've had to call dispatch and um, they have helped me tremendously with dispatching helicopters, whatever else is needed for a drowning that happened uh, uh, I think it was in 2019. Um, also, uh, so I think that we need to probably say no to the resolution or, or table it, um, as it's been said by the other people that spoke before me, um, so we can find the proper solution for this um, situation with the dispatching center and the dispatchers involved. Um, my second thing is the Hopakong Street, uh, vacating Hopakong Street. Um, I understand that in the beginning of this, someone said that uh, things need to be added uh, to this. So it'll be clearer for people that it's going to be a fire lane, so on and so forth, whether it's on the easement or however else it is. Um, I'm just curious on what the status update on that is as well. That is it. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Uh, Teresa Walker, you're up. Okay, can you hear? I think I'm unmuted now. Uh, okay. I have a question. It's actually two items on the bill list. Uh, it's bill number 2101339 and 2101384. Uh, they're payments to remove trees, uh, but they're residence address. I'm just curious why they're submitted to the town. I'm sure there's some explanation of it, but when I saw the addresses and their bill paid to remove trees, if someone could explain it to me. And that's the only questions I had. Uh, I do have a comment. I appreciate the Zoom meeting especially while Sussex County vaccination numbers are still not at the state level and that we're still considered a very high transmission rate. So I do appreciate that we have uh, the ability to at least come to the meetings, even if it's not in person, having it done this way. So, um, I'm sure if you ask 10 people, you'll get 10 different responses on it. But thank you anyway for making it available. And that's that's it, thanks. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Patty Adrindas, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Patty, you're up. Hi, that's close. It's Patty Arendis and I'm at 28, okay. 28 Isabel Avenue. Northwood section. And I just want to thank, thank the council for all their help with ordinance 23-2001. Um, we have uh, submitted a proposed amendment, hoping just to make sure that the street is protected and that the fire truck can always get through. We've worked with the fire department and NCA very closely, and I hope you consider and, and approve all the proposed amendments. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Um, I only have it as iPhone 10. I'm not sure who you are. I'm going to ask you to unmute and you're up. Hi, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm new to the phone and I'm at work, so I only have a minute. Thank you so much for taking it. My name is Michelle Yaros. Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. So my name is Michelle Yaros and my street address is 22 Rollins Trail, Hopaka, New Jersey. And I am 
talking about the resolution 2021-140 and two things I would think that um all these dispatchers, all this emergency first responders that we have in this town, including the community um, responders that were so essential to our uh, Sandy um, reaction that we had. I think that our town was beyond the best as far as having the resources for the victims of Sandy and anyone else that was directly um, negatively affected or indirectly affected by Sandy. And that um, I mention a lot because that really was huge and it shows you how our dispatchers and our first responders in this town are so essential and needed and will be needed. Um, I say, I hope that you guys say no to this resolution or at the very least table it um, for future discussion before um, you start the exploration. Um, give some townspeople that didn't know anything about this resolution some time to look at it and discuss it amongst themselves during the benches of watching their children or their coffee clutches at the delis and, and get a little bit more and see the interest and the passion that maybe they'll come to the future meetings. And speaking of your future meetings, um, I would love to see the future meetings being held in person. Um, I know COVID is a big scare. I work in the medical field. I see it every single day, but we can get creative. Um, the auditorium at the high school can be asked. We can sit six seats apart. Um, hello. I mean, our town meetings usually have between 12 and 20 people and we're happy. Um, so that is most definitely possible. I'm sure the Board of Education would be more than happy and willing to help the town council have appropriate meetings where we can all have a voice and not be limited to Zoom. Um, some people don't know how to use Zoom. Some people don't even have a computer or an iPhone or a smartphone to be able to use Zoom and be part of this um, important discussion and future discussions. Obviously, my heart right now is in resolution 2021-140. But there's other passions that I have that I would be coming to the town council meetings. Um, I don't expect you to change it from a Wednesday. I'm at work until 1 a.m. on Wednesday, so it's very difficult to me to get on. I actually asked special permission from my physician to let me go on for 15 minutes and listen to you guys. Um, that's what I wanted to say. And the last thing I wanted to see is back in the day when I used to come to the meetings and scream and yell and be part of the physical awesomeness, um, I used to be able to speak at the beginning of the meeting, and then I was able to have you guys listen to my beautiful voice at the end of the meeting. Um, that stopped. And me researching back to the minutes up to 2019, that stopped from one week to the other in May of 2019. And I would love for that second public comments to come back to the meetings because it really does put a closure on things that maybe have been brought up that were forgotten to be put on the agenda or somebody else spoke. And it's just something that was reminded. It's very difficult for someone to put all their thoughts together rushing from work, rushing from giving their kids meals or having to tell their husbands, well, how about time to put the kids to bed if it's the mom or have vice versa, to have that extra minute while we're listening and digesting everything that you wonderful people are telling us about our town and the decisions that you're making on our behalf. It'd be nice to have an opportunity at the end of the meeting to make a comment, even if you limit it to one minute, right? Right now I've been speaking 3.5 minutes. I'm keeping track of my time. Um, it would be wonderful to have one or two minutes at the end of the meeting to be able to discuss whatever was discussed at the meeting. Thank you for your time. I'm going back to work. I really appreciate that you let us have this opportunity to speak. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Let's see here. Uh, Carly Cockler, you're up. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, this is Carly and my husband, Robbie Cockler. We're at 12 Canfield Street. Um, I just have a few notes uh, here. The first one is I agree with the in-person meetings. I'm newer. I've been to a few meetings recently, um, but I would like to start going to them in person and meeting everybody and actually being able to ask more questions maybe before, during, and after. Uh, larger venue sounds like a great idea. I think the high school idea is awesome. Um, next, I just wanted to kind of say thanks to Dan Rodriguez for everything that he brought up. I would love to hear all that information that he brought forth. Um, and then where would we find that information? I don't know if it gets posted to the page or if it can get sent out somehow in a, in a letter to everyone or how do we find that information after this? Um, I'm not always on Facebook, but that's where I try to pop in and, and read some things. I try to check our website, but I just feel like there's, if you're not, 100% active in the town, it's hard to get the information. Um, my next comment is, 
Is it possible to ask other towns that move their dispatch center um, how they felt about it, how it went um, in the beginning, what the differences were between when they had local dispatch versus moving their dispatch center, uh, just to get an idea. I mean, I know that other towns have done it, so it'd be nice to hear from them. Um, next is, so I've grown up in Hope Hakong. Uh, we bought a house here a few years ago and we're hoping to have a small family here. So I'm concerned when it comes to the dispatch. So, oh, that was 20, what was it? 2021-140. So I'm concerned about our um, dispatch center uh, and just the safety of our town. Like, how does that affect our safety? Um, uh, let me see what else I have. Um, oh, and then just a few things that I know that our dispatch center have done. And I think this is very personal and I'm just not sure that this would happen if we were moved to county. But I'm gonna start with the one simple. Um, when our trees go down in town, our dispatch center starts a list. And I feel like that's something that's really personal to our town. Um, they make sure that they're on top of it because it's our town working for our town. So people who live here working and caring about um, getting our town cleared up. That's a simple one. Uh, the other example is actually, I, there was like a school debacle, bus miscommunication, kids not getting brought home on like the first day of school. It was like a whole mess I heard about. And I know that our dispatch actually played a, a big part in solving that. Uh, so between dispatch and our police, getting to the different schools, finding the missing children, getting everyone back home safely. It was awesome that we did, but would our county spend the time to do that? Um, and last, I, I think this was a year or two ago when, I think it's called Dredge Boat, Dredge Dredge Boat, when that flipped in the lake and we have all these coves and Hopakong does have the windy hills, they have the coves on the lake and we just, we know where everything is or local community people know where everything is that our cops were able to get to the dock and jump off that dock and swim to the dredge boat to try and save him. Um, and that was thanks to our dispatch center for knowing the area and knowing how to get to that cove. Um, I think that's all of my points and thank you for your time. Thank you, next up, Ron. Uh, Rebecca, you're up. Hello, my name is Rebecca Rodriguez. I'm at 122 Brandona Ave. Um, I just want to second what Carly said. I think that was a great point. Our dispatchers are invaluable to us. And my biggest question regarding that would be, have we asked towns that did switch over what they're feeling about it? How has it worked out for their towns? Have they seen the same productivity coming from dispatch? These are things that are so important and we have the resources to ask that we might as well be asking them. And has this information been shared with the police department? Has it been shared with the ambulance squad, with the fire departments, even with the town? Um, and secondly, having in-person meetings is invaluable. It allows everyone to put a face to the name. It allows us to make connections in our town and feel as though we matter. Of course, keeping Zoom available for people who are afraid of COVID or who aren't able to get out, that's so important and it increases access. So just wanted to see if these are things we're thinking about and bringing to your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Uh, Mara, you up? Hello. Um, I uh, have a question about the bill list. 21-01458 is Lurch, Vinci, and Higgins LLP, $22,000. And it just says progress billing in the matter. And then I'd like to speak about the dispatchers. I'd like to mention that dispatchers do more than just direct traffic. And our emergency personnel are excellent first responders in this town. And I'd like to know how um, it was posted. There, there was $3.6 million was the amount for the dispatcher upgrade. And I'd like to know how that number was arrived at. And does that include the $76,000 that we already allocated for an upgrade for the dispatch console, which was ordinance 17-2021 on 61621? And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Ron. That seems to be it, Michael. 
Okay. Uh, oh, wait, one more. Hold on. Miss Poland, you're up. Hello, uh, this is Patricia Poland. I reside at 29 Rollins Trail in Hopaka. Um, I also would like to speak of 2021-140 in reference to dispatch. Um, I know a lot of people know who I am. I, at one point, was a trainee at the Hopakon Dispatch Center. Um, at another point, I was a um, trainee up at Sussex County at the actual, um, quote unquote, outsourcing uh, PS, uh, center, the, the PSAP that is up there. Um, I, have, I have to play devil's advocate here. Um, because I've been in, worked in both of these places. Uh, I am going to start with that I have the most utmost respect for any of these PSTs, any of these dispatchers. They have a hard job. Um, it's chaotic, it's stressful, it's underappreciated, and it's also incredibly rewarding. Um, the PSTs are the first, first responders in any emergency, any 911 call, and they need to be recognized by the state of New Jersey as that. And currently they're not, they're considered clerical. Um, but that's another, that's a whole nother conversation. The mayor and the town council and the business administrator, um, you guys all have a duty to the people of this town, to all of these people who are speaking and listening. You have a duty to us and it's your job as paid and elected officials to explore these options to explore public safety for the services that you are required to provide to our town. Um, I also hope that you guys are not just exploring dispatch. I hope that you are exploring garbage, um, our parks and grounds care, uh, maintenance fleet, fleet maintenance. I hope that you are exploring all of this, not just dispatch um, and our communication systems that we have in our town. Um, I would like to note that as I had worked in as a trainee, as a PST trainee in the county, um, a lot of the things are very similar. Um, you know, these dispatchers in Hopakong answer the, the phone the same way that you answer across the county, across the state, because that's how you have to. 911, where's your emergency? It's how it is. That doesn't change whether you're located in Frankfurt, whether you're located in Hopakong. These dispatchers up county are required to do the same training, if not more. It's over 500 hours of training that they are required to do. They do the same ride-alongs. I personally spent five hours with one of the agencies, the police agencies that we dispatch for, and I spent six hours with another agency. Mind you, in Hopakong, I had only done one hour with a patrolman. Actually, it was a sergeant. Um, so. They do the same thing. Our training is the same. We are certified the same way. It's public telecommunicator number one. Up at county, you have to be an EMD as well. Some of our dispatchers are EMDs. Uh, I, I can't actually speak whether they all are or not. I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that they do not EMD there. At least while I was working there, they do not EMD. That is a service that's provided by St. Clair's. Um, which is, and, and please, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that, if it has changed, uh, but they do not EMD. So that's something that is outsourced. Um, uh, let's see. I have the same feelings that the dispatchers up county have um, as we have down here. They are there to serve the people on the other side of that phone line, whether they live in Hopaka, whether they live in Vernon, whether they live in Roxbury or Jefferson and they are, you know, cell phone towers bounce them into Hopakong. They don't care where you are. They care they're helping the people. And that's important. Um, it's, it's not specific. And I don't want to take, don't take that the wrong way. It's not specific. They do this job to help people and it doesn't matter where they live. Um, I, I have, Ah, I'm sorry. Um, I, I really do. Again, I really hope that you guys are not just um, putting the, the, there's a whole nother side to this story. And, and I hope that 
you do let the rest of the town people know the county side of the story and, and what those, um, those things that the county has to offer and the resources and that you're not looking to leave the people of Hopak on high and dry. That's five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Uh, Wolf, uh, Judy, I guess that's you. Actually, that's Don Wolf this time. Okay, there we go. 36 Alexandria Avenue. Okay. Would like to say hello to the council. Thank you to the members who brought up uh, saying tabling or voting no on 2021, 140. Uh, wanted to speak first to the Hapakong Street and the reason for our uh, our questions about keeping a fire lane there. It is a question of safety for the homes in this area that if there is not another source of water available to fight a fire up here, then we absolutely need that fire lane. It is without question critical. And I would also ask that any other fire lanes in this town that you are considering vacating, unless there is another source of water for them that you do not move forward with any of that. As to the dispatch center, um, you saw the number of calls that they receive, uh, a couple of hundred fire calls, a thousand ambulance calls, and then there's 76,000 other calls. Where we are getting those other calls answered is the question for the council <clears throat> to consider. And I know that you wanna move forward and have meetings with these people and it is most definitely necessary for you to understand what goes on in that dispatch center. There are many calls there that are not emergency calls. They are not 911, but they are critical to the citizens of this town. And there are questions that are answered and there are needs that are addressed and they are sent to the correct persons and they serve the community. You would have to have people replace that and that's gonna add a cost to you as well. And these are all things that I think will come up when you do have the meetings. I am a little bit disappointed that this was not brought up sooner and that uh, a lot of rumors circulated around the town before we got to this point. But I strongly ask you to vote no or table this until we can have some actual discussion. I absolutely want open meetings and an open forum for this. I think in person is going to be critical. And I would also ask that you bring back the second public comment part of your town meetings. Thank you very much. No more on? Um, don't see any, Michael. Mayor, that's all I see at this point. Entertain a motion and bring it back. So made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I will personally address a lot of the issue with the dispatch center in my comments, and it, it will be documented. So if you want, you can have a copy of it. But uh, the, the question about the tree removal, uh, we do that when the tree is on our property and we identify where we're at with a, with a house address. We don't we don't cut trees down on private property. So when you see tree removal on a bill list, it is a tree on borough property that's endangering someone else's property and we're obligated to, to manage that. Um, In-person meeting, we're, we're still looking into that. We'll continue to look into that, but right now uh, the safest thing to do right now is Zoom meetings. Uh, and the reason I say that is because the numbers, we have to be very careful with COVID. Uh, I can't tell people what to do and won't, but I do pay attention to the numbers and the report from Sussex County. And so uh, when we see, uh, and I'll ask them from guidance from the, the State Board of Health, the County Board of Health, and also uh, the governor's uh, executive order. So we, we will pay attention to that. I, I kind of like personal meetings too, but, uh, we got to pay attention to COVID. Um, where are we? A pack on the street, we're going to address that. 
the uh, shared services, uh, actually our, our, our landscaping is outsourced. We don't do that with our employees. Our garbage have been outsourced for the past few years. And although it's not perfect, we keep trying to make it better. Like anything else, COVID has affected that employer. Uh, we do shared service with animal control. So we are pay, paying attention to everything and any opportunity we have. And, and we didn't come about it easily either. We probably won't in this case, but we'll, be, we'll do a thorough job, I can assure you. Uh, and I will make a comment on, as to why you'll understand a little bit later. So uh, approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion on the minutes for 9-15-2021. I'll move them. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. I don't think Brad's uh, uh, eligible. Okay. I'm saying I wasn't here. Okay. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Thank you. Approval of the bill list, and uh, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, does anyone need anything out? Um, I, I, I'll move the bill list in its entirety, not hearing any, but we did have a question on the bill list that didn't get answered. Yeah, as soon as we, as soon as we do the list, we'll answer that question. Okay, then I'll make a motion to, uh, to move the bill list in its entirety. Second. I'll second it. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Lorraine, would you talk to the issue of the $22,000 with Lynch or with the uh, Lurch? Uh, sure. That was a, <clears throat> excuse me, a progress billing for our 2020 audit. Okay. Audits are important because you haven't been reading about other stuff going on with other entities. So we take our audits very seriously. Hope that answers the question. Uh, approval of the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Thank you. Ordinances, there are no introductions. Final hearing. Ordinance 23 2021, partially vacating Papacon Street, and ordinance partially vacating a portion of Papacon Street right away in the borough of Papacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey. Mr. So, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, would I like want. To, all right, let's do a motion and a second, then discussion. I would like to make I a moved motion. It. I would move it. Okay. okay. I would like to make a second motion, not a second but a different motion, please. My motion would be to introduce these clarifications that have been reviewed by our attorney, Johnny Erson. Section A should be revised to read the rights of the public and the borough of Hapatcong, whatever they may be, in and to the portion of Hapatcong Street as depicted in Schedule A and described as the portion of Hapatcong Street between Block 70111, Lot 1, and Block 70220, Lot 34 and 35 is hereby extinguished and vacated with the exception of the reservations contained herein. Nothing herein shall extinguish the rights, if any, of any property owner whose property may lie within the area of the filed map that created Hapakong Street. Section A number two should be revised to read. The remaining portion of Hapakong Street not shown on Schedule A is retained as a municipal right of way. Section A, number three, should be revised to read, the Borough of Hapatcong reserves an easement for the Hapatcong Fire Department, the Hapatcong Police Department, the Hapatcong Ambulance Squad, and similar emergency organizations to access Lake Hapatcong as needed. To facilitate this easement, no vehicles may be parked in the area designated in Schedule A. Similarly, no building, structure, or amenity may be constructed or placed within the area designated in Schedule A. Section A, number four, should be revised to read. The Borough of Hapatcong retains an easement to discharge stormwater and runoff 
into and through the vacated area and reserves the right to maintain or improve any of the stormwater structures erected thereon. That is my motion. Thank you. All right, John. Okay, so just, just pause for one second. So uh, Mr. Smith's motion should be a motion to amend the ordinance. So this is not to adopt. This is going to be a motion to amend the ordinance. There's a, there's a first uh, a move on the uh, floor. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Okay. So mayor, this does not get public comment. Um, you can have discussion to the extent you like, and then you can call the roll. If the amendment passes, then the uh, ordinance as amended is available for second reading by the council. Uh, as Mr. Smith mentioned, I did review these changes uh, with Mr. Smith. Uh, we are very careful not to make changes on ordinances at second reading. Uh, the reason is that people are entitled to rely on the agenda and to know what items are going to be discussed. And you uh, should be very, very cautious about making changes to an ordinance on second reading that might change someone's viewpoint or change their position or might have caused them to come to a meeting. Um, these changes, although you know, there's, uh, you know, there's substantial wording here, I view these as clarifications. Um, each of these is not a new paragraph or a new restriction that was in the, the vacation ordinance. I think there are clarifications and the language just expands upon what's already written. So uh, I am comfortable uh, if the council feels <coughs> appropriate to entertain this as an amendment. I think it's consistent with the notice that we give to the public. So now tell me that in English. So this so, is, so this so, won't be the final hearing. Correct. No, no, it will. So so Mayor, let's just do it one at a time. So the the Mr. Smith has moved this as an amendment to the ordinance. Does someone okay. want to say that? Ms. Robertson, I did. Okay, I'm sorry. So, did. Mayor, you, this is just a vote now on the amendment of the ordinance for consideration of the council. If it passes, then you will hold, then someone will make a motion, they'll move it uh, for adoption, and then you'll hold your public hearing. Okay. So, okay. Ray, that right now, would be a roll, roll call vote on the amendment. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoffercamp, and this is for yes. the amendment. Yes. Ms. Johnson. We're not going to have open public comment. We're not going to have open comment on this. We not on, not on the amendment. On the adoption, you will. Okay. So yes. Ms. Thank Roberts. you, Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Okay. So the amendment passed. So now, what's in front of the council is uh, available for second reading and public hearing is the motion as amended. So I, I think that Mr. Young had made a motion earlier to adopt it, but perhaps um, he should make that motion again if he intends to make the motion to adopt it as amended. I'll make that motion again. I will second. All right, now, now I'll open it to the public for a public comment or comment from the council. Uh, Councilman Smith, I gotta take your screen off because I can't see everybody with your screen on. I'll do that now. I got you, dude. Thank you. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, don't see any mayor. I want to make sure yeah. that this, this amendment means that that whole fire lane is a no parking zone. Uh, it, so so I, I wouldn't phrase it that way. I would, you know, when you have an easement and the easement has language that says it can't be blocked, uh, that doesn't mean that a car couldn't park in the easement, but a car couldn't park in the easement in a way that would interfere with the rights of ingress and egress, in this case, a fire truck to get to uh, the uh, lake. So it's not, this is when, if you adopt this ordinance, it will be vacated, it will be private property. So it's not, it's not an area that we would enforce no parking. That's why in easement language, uh, it is not to block or interfere with the rights of ingress or egress. Okay, so then what's the wording that says no parking? That says no cars are allowed there. Um, 
Mr. Whosoever has control of that might flip it back up and then I could, because uh, I'll be reading from the copy that I have on paper here. Yeah, I have a, co I have a copy of it. Well, uh, there, you go. there we go. Thanks, Councilman Smith. You're welcome. <laughs> it says yeah, no so vehicles may be parked in the area designated as schedule in Schedule A. Correct. Which means that no vehicles can be parked there. Yeah. So we we look. We may be saying the same. Immediately think of your ordinance where we enforce no parking. You know, you you give somebody a ticket for no parking. If someone parked in the easement, it would be more in the realm of enforcing your easement rights than issuing a ticket for no parking. This isn't this isn't part of your no parking zone in your ordinance because it's not public property. And I, I know I'm splitting hairs and making a distinction there. It really is the same effect, but I just want to be accurate. Correct me if I'm wrong, John. If somebody were to park in a fire lane and a police officer were to encounter that car, could they ticket that car? Yeah, so it's a little bit of a different issue. Um, uh, so, so if, you know, so typically in a, in, a, in a parking lot like this, and probably this one in particular, the property owner usually petitions that uh, public uh, Title 39 laws are enforced in the parking lot. So that's cars, abandoned cars, somebody doing something reckless, someone speeding down the road, that type of thing. Um, so uh, in that case, yes. Uh, if the business petition that Title 39 would be uh, enforced in uh, their parking lot, and you see those signs, like if you went to ShopRite or you know you went to the mall or any larger size business, usually has a sign posted that Title 39 regulations will be enforced in the parking lot. So if if the police drive by and there is a car in the fire lane, they cannot ticket that car. Well, I think the issue is not whether there's a car in the fire lane. I think the issue is whether the car is blocking the fire lane, right? So that is, that's the case all over town, right? So if, uh, you know, there's lots of fire lanes that uh, intersect with people's backyards and paper roads and everything else. So um, and I'm, I'm just suggesting that it wouldn't necessarily be a police matter unless it was blocked. If it was blocked, then the police could take action. Have you have you been down there? Have you seen it? Me personally? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the whole exit is a fire lane. So it, it goes from it goes from one side of the curb to the other side of the curb. And it's painted yellow, it says fire lane. So if there's a car in that fire lane, then it is a ticketable offense because they are blocking the fire lane. They're in the fire lane. They're not even blocking it. They're in it. Okay. So then that would be enforceable by the police. So it would be enforceable by the police if the property owner petitions to have Title 39 enforced there. Yes. So, okay. So this doesn't actually make it a no parking zone. It does not. Okay. Thank you. More comments? Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Bernie has his hand up. No, I do. Are we open to the public now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, Wolf, you're up. Sorry, I had to unmute. All there right. You go. My understanding, and let me make it clear to the council that what we are trying to do is leave access for the fire department to get to water if our homes catch on fire and or the woods where we live. There is no water in Northwood. There is no plumbing in Northwood. We have no fire hydrants in Northwood. Therefore, the only way for us to get water is from the lake. And if there are cars blocking access to the lake, our homes are going to burn down. The point here was to not pass the property over to the business. Not that I have a problem with them having it, but simply because there's no other source of water for our homes. So I am hoping that you will then vote no on this and we're gonna to have to come back and revisit it again. This is absolutely 
unacceptable to to cut off any source of water if there's a fire at my house. Thank you. More, Ron? Yes. Uh, Patty, you're up. Hi, yes, I'm, I stand right behind Don. I have seen fires on this hill and I have seen people die on this hill because of fires. We need to make sure no cars can ever park in that lane. And if they do, they're ticketed. And if this does not cover that, then I would like the council to vote no. Thank you. Okay. And Bernie, you're up. Okay, my name is Bernie Kaczkowski, 53 Northwood Road, uh, mailing address at Lake Havacon. I am a member of the Havacon Fire Department. I am a lieutenant of company number two. I am also a member of the Fire Prevention Bureau. The whole concept of having the fire lane open we were concerned the i'm also part of the northwood community association and the concern is overall that if the fire lane is blocked the police department can ticket or have vehicles towed we cannot yeah. afford to have that fire lane blocked you know so it, it, as long as the borough of a PACCON and the police department have jurisdiction over parking in that fire lane, then we support it. Otherwise, if we cannot have support and have that fire lane um, cleared, then there's no sense in having fire lane vacated because we have to have access. And that's it, period. <clears throat> More, Ron? Yes, we have Nancy, you're up. Uh, thank you. So in regards to the fire lane, um, like I said before, I live um, up the hill of the Northwood bus stop. So I do agree that that needs to be a fire lane 24-7, 365. Um, I work at the business as uh, security, just to use the proper uh, terminology. Um, I work there on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I am in the medical field full time, so hence on why I'm there only on the weekends. Um, the fire lane is you, normally- Are you drinking my seltzer? Not blocked. Can you give me another bottle of water? Because okay oh my gosh i'm so sorry i thought it was muted I'm, i apologize so much nancy it's, it's okay the fire lane is uh not blocked when i'm down there um i do see it's like a quick loading and unloading of uh, the food for the restaurant so on and so forth um there's uber eats doordash all this stuff that pulls over towards the right of the fire lane and they move within like three minutes i know there can be an emergency that can happen in three minutes. When I'm down there, it is not blocked. An ambulance can fit, uh, a fire truck can fit. Um, it can go down, it can come up. I was also doing some homework on the larger fire truck. Um, if they can fit down that fire lane, I was told that they could not. So we're trying to also resolve the left side of the hill which is the bigger side so that way god forbid there's an emergency the fire truck doesn't have to turn into that crazy turn that because they would have to go down the road and turn around which is uh using up uh time uh that can be precious uh i, I agree um the other gentleman was saying before that uh, it would be up to the business to do the 39 code in order for people to be ticketed. Um, if that can be done, then that would be great. I can speak speak to the business 
owners to see if that can be done because I agree that there should not be people parking there for a long period of time at all. Um, whether they're parking on the side, parking, they should not be parked there. That should be available 24 seven. Um, so I just think that it needs to be clarified uh, 100%. Um, if people park there, sometimes it's not in the bar's control because they're not open 24 seven. Then if a police officer drives by and sees a vehicle left there, it should be ticketed in my opinion. I'm also playing like devil's advocate here, um, but we do need the fire lane. It's very important, just the same way we need the dispatchers. Um, it just all needs to be done properly. So if it's not gonna be open and people are gonna do what they wanna do there, then, then it should not be vacated, just being honest. Um, but I don't think that the owners are doing anything to make this situation harder. They will work with you guys 100% uh, to keep following up on this stuff and, and keep the control and not allow people to park there or anything like that. So that's just my opinion. People should be ticketed. It is a fire lane. It shouldn't be, they shouldn't park there, not only block it, but they shouldn't park there either. If someone is standing for a minute or so on the side where it does not block a fire truck or an emergency vehicle from going down, that's a different story, but not for someone to park there and go eat or park there and go on the lake. That's very important and it needs to be documented. It needs to be addressed. And I know that the owners of the restaurant will work with the community and the town to make sure that it's done properly, where it's going to benefit the town and everyone involved. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. More on? Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, you're up. Uh, yes, Daniel Rodriguez again, nine Skyline Drive. Uh, I'd like to agree with everyone else. Uh, we should not uh, accept this ordinance if uh, they don't have full access to ticket and tow any vehicles. Uh, just to throw some comments, uh, I fully support Lola's. Uh, love the restaurant, love the food, and I think we need to bring more uh, businesses to town like them. Um, maybe it's something we can negotiate with the business and the town of infrastructure improvements and adding a draft site or draft pipeline that would give access up to the main road so they wouldn't have to drive down that hill as it's dangerous all time year round. Uh, that's it. Uh, vote no if we can't have full access to that. Thank you. Get more around. Let's see here. Yeah, one more here, Don and Judy, you're up. Yeah, good evening. Um, I just wanna say I do agree with Dan and everybody else that's been there talking. I am an EMT in a pack hung and have seen fires up on this hill. We cannot vacate this road. We need to make sure that we keep access. Police have the right to tow and, make, and give tickets. We can give Lola's the right of way to cross over if they need to access their separate thing, but the borough does need to keep control of this road. You have no idea how dangerous it is if there's vehicles there and the fire department cannot get down there. We support the fire department completely and they need that access. So please vote no. Thank you. Hey, Ryan, you're, you got your hand up. So I do. Councilman, I Smith, do. Yeah, Councilman Smith, you want to come in? I do. Mr. Urson, what do I need to do to this ordinance so that the police can enforce it? Yeah, I, I think I think it's the coordination with the property owner. Uh, you know, I don't see uh, why the property owner wouldn't um, seek uh, a uh, Title 39 resolution. Um, you know, it'd be in their best interest, especially given the, you know, sort of characteristics of the parking lot. Um, but, you know, the two, you know, the two concepts are uh, intersecting here. If, if you vacate it, you're going to put restrictions on it, but the restrictions are on private property and uh, it just doesn't fall under your, your, your parking ordinance. So, um, you know, I think, I think that's, uh, if you wanted that extra layer of protection, I think that's the only way to get it. 
So can we make a motion to table this until the next meeting pending a conversation with Lola's? I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, Mr. Urson, can you please contact Lola's and get that title 39? And until we do that, I would like to table this until we have that agreement in place. I second that. That's the only thing holding me back. Mm. We need access to that water. Mike, are we done with public comment? You yeah. tell me. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's take it a step at a time here. Yeah, let's let's. Uh, there, there's going to be a yeah. table motion that's going to be yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, for sorry. vote, but let's. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. The, the We're table a mess motion today. Usually, it usually <laughs> takes precedent, but but let's let's conclude the public hearing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Move to bring it back. This, uh, hold on, hold on one second, please. Let me. I got sixty people on this Emmy on this Zoom, and I wanted to make the I wanted to make the notion. I appreciate everybody's comment on personal meetings, but we never have this many people in the room. I can tell you that. Um, okay, Mayor, I don't see any more hands. All right, let's uh, motion to bring it back. I'll move to bring it back. Second. All right, is that the pleasure of the council? Move to table uh, it until we get Title Thirty Nine. Second. Yeah. Well, let's let's table it to a specific date. Um, let's, Mr. Smith, can you uh, would you agree to table it to the next meeting? What's or you want to table it to or you want to table it to meetings, Mr. Smith? I would like to table it to the first meeting in November, which is on the date of November third. That's, that, that's, I second that, yeah. Okay, then that the motion to table it to uh, November 3rd is available for both then. I'll entertain a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Have it. Your roll call. Got that. Call the roll. Okay, Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Okie dokie. Ordinance 26 2021, Austrian Properties, an ordinance of the Borough of Pacon County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of certain property owned by the borough and not required for public purposes, more commonly known as 109 Brown Trail, 216 Squaw Trail, and 457 Brown Trail. So like to move that? Second. Call the roll. Oh, we need to open to the public. Oh, oh okay. yeah, public, public. Yeah. All right, open to the public. I'm sorry. Michael, it seems the, the uh, mayor. Excuse me, the mayor. It seems the public is okay. Okay, it's okay with me. Call the roll. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Valerie, what's the auction date? Uh, the auction date will be the next meeting. So that's the second meeting in October, whatever that date is. I don't have a calendar. 20th, I think, uh, Mayor. It's, it's the 6th, so yes, the 20th. Okay. Just so everyone know. Resolution, resolution 2021. 131, authorizing an agreement with the National Life Group for Deferred Compensation Plans. So moved. I could call the roll, please. Mr. Uh, are, are, are we having discussions or, or is this the first reading? This is a res this is resolution. 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 Okay. I just had a question. Go ahead. You should not scream for yourself, sir. Go ahead. What's your question? Oh, the question is, you know, where did this come from in the sense of the deferred compensation plan? Uh, Lorraine, you want to weigh in? I mean, uh... um, sure. What what kind of question did you have about it? I mean, was this um, uh, like where did it come from? Just from uh, our employees or? 
Was this um, something a solicitation from an outside vendor to offer a service um, in addition to the 457 plan for a, a more of a holistic retirement planning that our employees currently don't have access to. It's, uh, it's free of charge, no cost to the taxpayer. Gotcha. So this is a choice for them if they choose to. It's an option. Correct. That's option. correct. correct. We do, That's right. We do have... We do have two other 457 plan providers uh, in house right now. This would add a third option. Okay, that's what I'm trying to understand. Very good. All the roll, please. Mr. Hoferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2021-133, authorizing a contract for crushing and screening services. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2021-134, authorizing a contract for elevator construction at Firehouse 3. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2021-135, authorizing the cancellation of property taxes for donated property. So moved. Is, Second. Is this, is, this for, is this for third quarter taxes? Do we know these amounts look high to me? I? Yeah. These were, uh, John, I think these were all the taxes. This was donated property in our natural resource area that you know we approved. I think it was all the remaining taxes that were left on it. Yeah, uh, that, look, that, that's what I'm asking. I mean, these resolutions should tell the council what they're forgiving. They typically, I have not been involved in situations where the council has forgiven back taxes in past years. Typically, uh, the, the, the resolution of, of accepting a donation typically uh, forgives that calendar year. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious about whether or not... It's in yeah, John, it's in the resolution. It's $483 for one property and $431 on the other. Just a question I would ask, that's all. Which quarter? Yeah, okay. Is that what your question is, John? In what, what quarter are those taxes? I'm, I'm, I'm really asking whether this is retroactive taxes back to 2020 or not. <laughs> I think this is just what's remaining, John. I don't know if it's 2020, 19, 17, or 18. The people are dead. I have no idea when these taxes were due. Oh, God. <laughs> but you know this is the final amount? Yeah. yeah. It's in the resolution. It's $400 on one. 400 and hold on. No, I heard the numbers. But yeah. John has a good point about back taxes. You don't want to surprise it's just this is it. I mean, uh, what's remaining okay, on the property is four. These yeah. are the numbers. Yeah. The, 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 what's remaining on the properties are 483, respectively, 431 on the other. That's okay. it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Call the roll, please. Hold on. The taxes were last paid on February 12th of 2020, if that's what your question is. I don't know if that helps in any way. No, we're... we're it, we, we, the balance is in the resolution. So, yeah. I, I understand that, but I think what John is asking is when they're from. They're from first, second, there's from second, third, fourth quarter of 2020, and first, second, third, and fourth quarter of 2021. There you go. And, that, and that's what I'm asking because yeah. the there council in the past has not forgiven past year's taxes in accepting donations. That's what I was asking. Mm -hmm. And it, it's the council's prerogative to do it, uh, but it's uh, it it crosses a little bit of a line that you haven't crossed in the past. I appreciate you bringing that out, John. It's the same thing for the other lot too. They're both the same. So if we don't do that, it just sits there, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't tax a dead person. 
Well, actually, actually you, you, you can. We don't tax people, we tax property. Right. All right. So it, it may be in this case, the notations already accepted and that may be the situation. The council may have to decide to do this. Um, but, you know, I think the, uh, when you decide to accept the donation, you know, uh, the, the, the council has been very selective in where you accept donations. And I think you, uh, you, you need to at least be informed, if not cautious, on forgiving back year's taxes when you accept the donation. It's a, it's a secondary uh, consideration. So um, it, it may be that the donation's already accepted and this is the amount of outstanding taxes and uh, there may not be a better alternative. Have we looked into the alternative though? Good and then know. does this set a precedent then too going forward for donated properties? Uh, I, I don't think it sets any kind of binding precedent, um, but the, uh, you know, I think the, 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 the more important thing is that I didn't mean to bring it up in the context of, of this amount here that's $400 on each lot, but it's something we should pay attention to. Thank you. Ron, can you explain anything, any more detail on this particular setup? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, Brett, uh, Councilman Hoffman, it's just the remaining taxes on property of a, <laughs> we've got, on one of these properties, we've got people that are nephews that are trying to close out everything that was done on an aunt's property that these properties are, you know, in our natural resource area and for whatever reason that why they bought it there or how it got there, I'm not sure, but they're just trying to clean up their, 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 their closing of everything that's gone on with the death. The one, the wife is dead and it's gone over to the husband and he's trying to clean it up so that he can move on. That's, that's all this is. Okay. I and mean, we can try to go after the estate, but I, I, I don't know the mechanisms of that. I, yeah, I would leave that up to the council. Why would you go after that? Yeah, the, 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 the donation has already been accepted. I'm just pointing yeah. out that when you forgive amounts in past years, you have already paid those amounts to the school and the county. Right. So on, the, on this one, on this one, Mr. Hofferkamp, I think the, the question you asked, it's, it's probably too late to take a different approach to it. So uh, there's small amounts, perhaps uh, council might consider just forgiving them here. But when we have donation requests come forward, it's something we should pay attention to. Thank you, John. I'm good with it. Yep, I'm good with it too. You want me to call the roll, Mayor? Yes, please. Okay, Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Thank you. Before we go on, is there somebody just texting me that they're in the waiting room? Is there anybody in the waiting room, Ron? They got Not the anymore. Okay, Not cool. anymore. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Resolution 2021-136, authorizing the purchase of a mason, dump, plow, and spreader. So moved. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2021-138, authorizing the purchase of two police vehicles. So moved. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2021-140, authorization to explore shared services through the DCA. Motion to table. Second. Can Call the roll. What can you do? You want to table it indefinitely, or you want to table it to a certain date? I it's think okay we to should... table it indefinitely, but we should just be clear. I yeah. asked council not to move on it, to just let it to let it go, not to table mm -hmm. it. Well, it's too early to even merit tabling it. I'm asking council to not move. We, we, not we can't move. make it disappear. <laughs> we... Well, yeah, you can. You can table it 
forever. You don't ever have to <laughs> forever. Let's take it forever then. So, uh, so the answer is that not the indeed. motion. You whoa, 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 one at a time, please. John, okay, help so, us out. Yeah, let me let me let me just jump in. So there's been a motion made to table it. The table was the table motion was not specific. So that's a table motion to table it indefinitely until it's taken off the table. That motion was second in, so it's ready for a vote. Because it's ready for a vote, it's also available for discussion. So uh, Ms. Ms. Roberts commented on that she would prefer that there be no motion at all and that the uh, agenda item not be acted upon. That's uh, something for the council to consider. Uh, if, uh, if, if the council wanted to follow Ms. Roberts' request, you would actually vote no on the tabling motion and then the item would be available for action and people could decide whether to take action or not. Or you could vote yes on the tabling ordinance and it goes off the agenda. I, I wanna say a couple of things here, actually. First of all, I don't think the subject is going away. So I think tabling it um, perhaps in, in, for an undetermined amount of time is somewhat appropriate. I do wanna thank several citizens that brought up several um, statistics, uh, mostly Dan Rodriguez, and every statistic I have met with the police and every statistic that I heard brought up was pretty much dead on accurate. Um, I have a lot more than what was brought up. Um, so, you know, I have looked into this somewhat with our police. I, I have questions for a lot of other police departments in the county. Um, I know right now that county uh, um, dispatch services 13 municipalities in the county. But of those 13, only one has their own police department like we do, and that's Byram Township. So one of my first questions is to the towns that have police departments of their own, why are they not going with the county? Um, but at any rate, that John. was my comment. Most of the statistics that were brought up were, were very accurate. Um, if you look at the dispatch payroll, and what the savings would be by going to county, you're talking $36, just, just over $36 per tax, uh, per taxable property in town, which is about $3 a month. I want to know how you guys have this paperwork, because I was given nothing. I have no, I was giving nothing. I have so, nothing. I asked for it three weeks ago. I still haven't received a single thing. $3.6 million to me is an arbitrary number the the fact that anybody knows what it, it's going to save to go over to county i don't understand how you guys have these this information when the whole the whole council doesn't have this information it's never been presented to us and can i can i just clarify john you said that uh not moving it doesn't make it go away i'm not trying to make the topic go away what i'm saying is the resolution never should have been on here to begin with when most of council has not met, has no numbers in front of them, and has not heard from all the entities in town. I absolutely do not want the topic to go away. I absolutely want to hear from everyone in our town, all the entities. It wasn't to make it go away. It's, it's to say it's, it's inappropriate to even put this resolution on here. Nothing personal to anyone here. But it's inappropriate to have the resolution on here when we have not had necessary meetings. But then, do I then need we, to clarify any further? Is that no? But then clear? we table it indefinitely. Then, the, if we can do that now that we've clarified that, I'm fine with indefinitely. I just don't want a date because I, no, no, no. I, yeah, absolutely, I understand. So, we'll t can we table it indefinitely? I made the motion to table indefinitely. You so, already did. Okay, you my bad. My second. bad. Call the roll about. Okay, Mr. Hofferkamp. This is to table it indefinitely, correct? Correct. Yes. yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Great. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. I just want to be clear. If we table this indefinitely and we decide we need to bring it back, are we allowed to? Yes. Okay, you, 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 you either relist it sort of separately uh, or you, you make a motion to bring it back from being tabled. Yep. Excellent. I vote yes to the table. And Mr. Young. Yes. Okay, old business. 
under new business is approval of stipulation of settlement for Bronstein versus the PAC on. John, can you help us with that? Yeah, of course. So I came to the council in closed session um, a few weeks ago and went over the Bronstein lawsuit. Um, you passed a short term rental licensing ordinance to try and get a handle on Airbnbs and VRBOs and other forms of short term rental situations. Um, I've been in, involved in some of that, uh, uh, the administration of, of those licenses. Uh, Mr. Bronstein brought a lawsuit against the borough. Uh, essentially claiming that the short-term rental licensing stat uh, ordinance was uh, uh, improper or, uh, yeah, improper. Um, in uh, defending the lawsuit, it became uh, apparent that there really was only one issue for this particular homeowner, and the particular homeowner wanted to deal with a situation where on one piece of property, there's two uh, permitted residences and a full-time owner or full-time caretaker lives in one of them. Uh, it would also apply to adjacent property owners, adjacent properties owned by the same uh, property owner where the owner or a full-time manager lived in one of them. And so when I came to the council a couple of weeks ago, I said, I thought the case could be resolved, you know, frankly, saving the taxpayers a lot of money with a small amendment to the short term rental ordinance, which basically uh, supplemented what we had already. We already had that if there was a, a full time owner present or a full time manager present, that that was uh, permitted to be licensed. And this just added the situation because there are a few situations in town where we have multiple residences on the same property or on uh, adjoining properties owned by the same property owner. So uh, the what's up tonight for consideration is settling the lawsuit. Uh, if we settle the lawsuit, then we will introduce the ordinance as I've described. Um, we also brought a claim because uh, as part of this case, it was apparent that there were short-term rentals and the borough has a hotel motel tax that applies to short-term rentals. And uh, that was not, uh, there had never been a filing or a payment of that tax. And so the plaintiff has agreed to pay 1500 uh, in back short-term rental taxes. Um, consider that a fair estimate of what the taxes would have been. Uh, although again, it would take a lot of discovery and uh, calculating to figure out the exact amount. So uh, this brings an early end to this lawsuit, essentially dismissing the challenge to your short-term rental ordinance with the small change that I have mentioned, and the borough gets the 1500 in short-term rental tax. Okay. We don't need to take any action on that, correct? Well, you would, uh, I, I think it would be appropriate since it is going to dismiss a lawsuit and then will obligate you to pass the ordinance. Um, I think you should vote to approve the stipulation as I've described it. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. So made. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoffer Camp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Before we go to mayor's comments, I have uh, I have three th three things. Well, two things. Just uh, bear with me on it. Um, I would like to make a motion um, to hold an open public meeting for county dispatch to present the information and disclose the financial impact of moving dispatch to county. Any idea put forth and considered by the governing body and mayor should be dependable and be made clear to the public. I'm calling for an open public meeting to have the details presented and discussed with the county, with our fire department, with our council, our mayor, our dispatch, our police, and our um, fire department. I think I said that. 
Uh, while we consider many ideas of the use of public money, we should be more open and transparent considering this and welcome public input. Well, we, we just started that and, uh, and that's already, hopefully we can, uh, we can execute that. I agree with that. No, no, but, no. Yeah. but I think that this meeting has to happen. My motion is to, for this meeting, this open public meeting, because it's been, let's, let's have an open public meeting. Let's do it. So I'm making a motion to have an open public meeting in the next three weeks with all of these entities to discuss this going forward, because I'm really, the amount of misinformation or gossip information or information that I don't have, we don't have as a council, it, it needs to, it needs to be over with. And I think there needs to be an open public forum where all, all questions are answered and everybody has the same information. Yeah, we, so we, Jen, we, we can agree to do that. So right. Jen, uh, that, that's not a bad thing. Um, I think it's a rush to have it right now. I think we need more information. I, I mean, I, I, I need to talk to other towns. I, I know John was mentioning he wanted to talk, I think, to Byram or whatever. That's a great idea. Mr. Rodriguez brought that up. Right. We're, we're, gonna, we're, gonna commit, we're gonna I've commit to having mind. meeting. We just have to write, we just have to figure the right format. We, we don't want to put a hundred people in a room because then it gets lost. So, so let, let's let's plan on on incrementally talking to the affected party, gather information that not only our people but other people. I, I agree that there, there's a whole lot more to be done here. We're, right. we're in the very early stages. So to so to give it the, the market on the calendar could be do more damage than good. So let's agree that we're going to meet with these people in an organized uh, uh, fashion to give so, everybody their opportunity, give them their day to talk. And then maybe after that, we can put the group together. And then after that, we can have a public hearing if, if, if it's so desired. But let's, let's take our time with this and make sure we do every step carefully. Okay, so then my motion is being ignored. Okay. The next motion I'd like to introduce is a motion to return to in-person meetings starting in the second meeting in October. I think the majority of people here want to go back to in-person meetings. I cannot continue Zoom meetings. I have young children at home. You heard me with my seltzers. I can't be on. This is <laughs> it's cra it's crazy. Um, I I want to introduce a motion to return to in-person meetings. If the municipal building does not work, we can I'm sure find another municipally owned property that has a big room that we can space out, or we can ask Dr. Piccarillo to use the school to the cafeteria. Well, we need to make them arrangements first. Uh, uh, you know, I. You know, you be, once you have a public meeting, you cannot exclude anyone. Not once you have that meeting, if if you exceed a capacity in any way, shape, or manner, you stop the meeting. We cannot stop anybody from coming in. And right now, uh, quite frankly, our, our numbers in Sussex County and in Pacon are, are not good. So, and that, and that's well. Then maybe the, maybe we find a way to do both. Then maybe we find a way to have live streaming and have possibly our lovely administrative, um, our, our deputy administrator handle the questions from public comment during that that time and have both of them happen at the same time, live and in person. This well, way, you, you know, it's, we're it's, the only. I'm telling you, we're the only municipality as far as far and wide that are still on Zoom, that are not in person. We're dealing with oh, really volatile issues knowledge. between the dispatch, what? between dispatch and between the this, this. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff that came up tonight. There's a lot of volatile issues that I think should be dealt with in person. I think we did pretty good with them tonight. No, I think, I think we do a good job, but I think that it's important that we're in person. Yeah, I do too, and I can I can give you twenty people that give you the opposite argument. Well, that, so but that's damned great. Damned if you do, and damned if you don't. We we make Zoom make people available at meetings that normally wouldn't. It makes uh, an, an in person meeting gives a more genuine. Uh, I, I get it. I okay. get it. But the right Board of now, Education is even doing a hybrid. Yeah, well, we we may or may not get there, but our the numbers in Sussex County are bad. We don't have good numbers. Okay, so then that 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 motion is also being ignored that I'm making. Is, is uh, there anybody know. that has a second to the, the motion to go in person? Yes, go back in person. Yes, I'll second that. Thank you, Don. No thanks necessary. So I call the roll, Mayor. Call the roll. 
Mr. Hoferkamp. No. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Not yet. Mr. Smith. No. And Mr. Yes. Young. Yes. Well, now I'm it's yes. like there you have to, to break the tie. I'm a yes. No, no. Mm -mm. But we have three and three? We have three and three. Oh, excuse me. Yes, we have three and three. Wait a minute. I, I, Go wait, back. Wait, wait, wait. I counted Take four the roll and two. call. Four and two. Yeah, there's four yeses. Brian said yes, correct? Brian said yes. I said yes. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I had you down as no. Okay, sorry about that. So the motion carried? So, yes. So the motion to have in-person meetings, we had four yeses and two noes. Okay. So we'll schedule the next meeting in person. And if we, if we can't meet the uh, required spacing, we cancel the meeting. Be, no, I want to be clear find a with different it. space clear. for the meeting. What? How are we going to know who's going to show up? How do you know that? You don't know that. And, and take this, take this, COVID seriously, please, please take it seriously. And, and you know, what other towns do, other towns do. We have been blessed in the pack on. We've been blessed. Our staff has been healthy. And so far, we've been taking a lot of a lot of precautions. Hopefully that makes a difference. But I'll tell you what, if you want to roll the dice, if that's a pleasure of the council, we certainly will do it. But okay. we will we will mark out the courtroom with the appropriate markings. We have to separate the council also to meet them requirements. And so, okay, it sounds great. We're gonna have in-person meetings. Okay, folks, careful what you ask for, cause you're gonna get it. I'm telling you right now, if we meet, if we exceed the number, the meeting gets canceled. Be prepared for that. Can we, can we look into making arrangements to use the high school auditorium? Sure, we can use we can use, look in them arrangements. Is there a cost? I don't know. We have to. That's we right. Have to, so we, have we to just made a motion. Do we think the that motion when we have we, no clue on what the rest of the details are? Okay. We do look we into we it, but the next three, meeting is now scheduled for the for for the courtroom and the burger pack on, so we can learn otherwise. That's great. Can we use one of the fire departments? We have three fire departments that have huge halls in them. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no access in firehouse number three for handicapped people. So the answer on number three is no. Okay. You want to do number two? Is there handicapped access in number two? Nope. So number four probably is ground level. You might get a wheelchair in there. Great. So, you know, it sounds good, folks. Uh, and no problem. Uh, I, I always honor what the council wants to do, and we're going to do it. So the next meeting will be in, in public. Hey, uh, Jen, can I speak in here? Um, I think you actually, your motion was to do it in the second meeting in November. Is that true? I meant October, the second meeting. Well, no, I meant the second meeting in, in October. Oh, October. Okay. I didn't, I okay. I thought you said November, but all right. My bad. I might have, it might have come out that yeah. in October. That's fine. That's fine. Yep. That's the wish of the council. That's what we're going to do. So be prepared. I will contact the high school tomorrow and I'll explore that. And if there's a cost, we're going to have to approve that cost. And if we can use four, then we can use four, right? Yep. Okay. The four is not much bigger than the courtroom, maybe a little bit. I like four because that's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That was all I had. I apologize. All right. All right, so now I want to address this dispatch a little bit. Maybe I can help a little bit, and maybe I can explain how we got here because, you know, someone said before that we have a responsibility as elected officials, and we do, and I agree with that. I forget who it was, but she's spot on. So I've been contacted by residents about our dispatch center. Uh, they, they call, ask what's going on, uh, and the fact that we're looking into a shared service with Sussex County. Uh, our early discussion were very informal. We gathered information to support further efforts to look into the shared service. As we move forward, the process will become much more formal as it just has tonight. 
and it will be carefully documented. Up until now, it's been that. What do you think? What does this mean? Uh, and then social media took over, of course. And there's a lot of information on social media, uh, mostly on social media, that it's simply not true. There is no large tax increase being anticipated. Any statement otherwise is false. It is simply not true. Uh, our current fund balance is $3.2 million. That's always in fluctuation. So the statement that there is no surplus uh, is also false or whatever they call it, the rainy day fund, but it, 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 it's called the fund balance. It's always in flux. Money takes out, money goes in. It's like a checkbook you use to pay your bills. Uh, we've reduced our gross debt in the past four years by $10 million. And that, that's all already available. It's, it's posted on the door of our CFO. I believe we did have it at a bulletin board for a little while. So the idea on Facebook or anyplace else that the borough is not financially stable is absolutely false. So the study was initiated that we, this all started for multiple reasons. The main reason was $1.8 million capital budget request by the police department for a new dispatch radio system. If you look at our budget pinned to the, the bulletin board and the, and the capital request, it's on there. And actually, I come to find out, it's actually a little bit more than that, but I'll stay with the 1.8 million because we can, we can run some numbers on how that affects uh, what we're doing. The property tax consequences on that money is uh, a lot. There's no final decision being made and won't be made until every issue, like we talked about, uh, of this shared service is resolved. So, so, so the accusation that it's done or a done deal or or there's a conspiracy, it's in the back room, that's simply false. There's a lot of false stuff going on. So our job here now is gonna to be to clear that up. And, and uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm famous for the statutes, but you know, according to the NJSA 40A colon 65-1, any local unit of the state may enter into contract with any other local unit for a joint provision within their jurisdiction of any service, which any party to the agreement is empowered to render. So the New Jersey uh, Department of Community Affairs, Division of Local Government Services supports shared service efforts and will help us facilitate a thorough and unbiased study of this shared service. And that's important to know. So the suggestion of a conspiracy that we're being strong on is false. We're doing this, this council is doing this of our own free will and volition. And the final decision we make, we make will be ours. We will own that decision not anybody else, not the state, not the county, not anybody, but us folks. So, uh, you know, I, I wanna be very, very clear with that. The financial uh, impact of $1.8 million, which is a fact on property taxes is as follows. And this is what got my attention initially. Uh, it was really the primary driver of this. So, our current tax rate is 94 cents per hundred dollars. Now you might lose, I might lose you on this, but I'm sorry, I, I'll make this available if you want. Our current tax rate is 94 cents per hundred dollar of assessed value. $1.8 million will raise that to $1.06 per $100 of assessed value. That results in a 14% increase in municipal taxes. That's what got my attention on this whole mess. And so how do you get to a tax point? Every $141,950 raises the tax rate by one cent. So our local tax levy is the amount we need from our residents to balance our budget. The tax rate is the mathematical product of dividing our levy by the assessed valuation and multiplying by 100, simply taking what we need and spreading it over all the assessed property value. In 2021, our levy was $13,360,000 and our valuation was $1,419,153,363. So if you divide that 13 million to 1.4 billion, you come up with 0 0.0094, which is our tax point, which is our levy. So if it's 94 cents for $100 of assessed valuation, our average assessed value of a home is $214,256. So 
So the local tax on our average home is $2,017.02. That's the municipal tax now. And so if you if you multiply 214,000, if you if you divide 214,000 by 100, you get $2,000 times 94 cents is that's how you get your tax, your municipal tax. So if we fund a new dispatch center as the chief of police requested for dispatch services at a cost of $1.8 million, the first year would increase our budget leading to the, the below. Our tax levy would go from 13 million 360 to 15 million 160,000. So when you do that, divide the 15 million into the 1.4 billion, you get a dollar six cents. And that would be that would be an increase of, of uh, a new tax rate, which is an increase of 12.6 cents. So the new local tax on the average home would be $2,288.78, which is an increase of $271 just in local taxes. And that's the 14% tax increase. So if you follow that, if you follow that all the way through with the value of your house with a dot $1.06 uh, tax levy, uh, the average house, from 214,000 would pay uh, increases from 217,000 to $2,271. So a $300,000 house would increase $360, a $400,000 house would increase $40. So the proposed expenditure of $1.8 million, which could be more for our dispatch has caused a lot of concern and has led to cost benefit study of a shared service, which, you know, this early on, it, it, it confused me early on. So if you didn't know about it right away, that's because I was trying to get my head wrapped around this before I could give this to you. And by the way, if you want this, uh, I can I can send it to you uh, in total. So this this expenditure is uh, $1.8 million for our dispatch service is, is very concerning. And so we look at what's that, what could Sussex County offer at the same or better levels? And that does not increase property taxes, you know. And that's just the money end of it. There's the technical end of it, and there's the people end of it. I understand that. But first, you got to understand the finances of it. So our challenge now is to look at the technology, determine if a shared service with Sussex County will benefit our town and the people and meet the immediate needs of all our safety concerns. So that's kind of what brings us right here now. And so, you know, we're, we're obligated to look at, at cost to the point where it has to make sense. And if everybody says we don't care what taxes are, then everybody could say that. But I do care what taxes are. And I do care what our debt is. And so we're on a good track. We haven't had a tax increase in three years. I'd like to continue that. We're, we're reducing our debt. I'd like to continue that. So this is a very, very careful place where we need to be and where we need to go. And I can't overemphasize that. So from here on in, uh, any any numbers you want uh, that I have, you're welcome to. And by the way, not a lot of people have called me. With all this junk is going on, all these people on Facebook and the whole world has my phone number. Not a one blessed call uh, concerning some of this stuff that was posted. Shame on you. I'm not a hard person to talk to. But boy, I have to tell you, I, I, I'm speaking from my heart. I know. No other way to speak. And, and I'm speaking the truth. I, I swear to you, I am. So this is not done, never will be done until we all shake our heads in agreement that we're responsible and accountable and we're serving everybody in our town and we're serving them the right way and get the, the, the thing that drives me is are we doing the right thing? We have to answer that fundamental question first. Are we doing the right thing? And if the answer is yes, and there are consequences to it. We have to accept them, be responsible for them consequences. No finger pointing, no saying, well, I didn't know you meant that and I didn't know you meant this. We're not making any decision because we all know, so we all know as elected officials what we want, what we need, and what we're responsible for to 15,000 and some odd people that are the, and, and the 8,000 or so homes that do pay their taxes. We're obligated to look at every nook and cranny of this. And at the end of the day, we might say we're okay. At the end of the day, you know, we're gonna say whatever we resolve. So it's a matter to me sometimes of what we need, maybe not what we want. And so we need to just keep that in mind. So, so uh, 
I hope I help people understand that the position that, that the administration has put in, and, and now uh, we're ready to, to move forward with this, I, I hope. And we're going to have some productive, we, we will have meetings, Jennifer, I promise you, we will have meetings. And by the way, uh, everybody lost my phone number when this started? I'm afraid not. So to, to say that this number, this 1.8 million, which now become 2.8 million, is a real number. That's from our police department. It's not made up. And I don't share emails with everybody, but I can tell you, I can assure you that they're not made up numbers. Not. And so I don't know how much more honest and direct I can be with, with the public and this council. I, I, I only know to tell the truth as I see it. And so we'll continue down this road and we're gonna do it openly and people might not agree, uh, but everybody will have their day to talk. Uh, I have talked to people too. And I've told people, why don't you call me? Let's get together. They're very involved parties. Nope. So you want to formalize it? We're going to print up a schedule. We're going to schedule meetings for everyone. And they'll be hopefully at a convenient time. I'll try to make them in the evening or I'll poll the council and see what a good time for a meeting is. I'll advertise the meeting. If the whole council wants to be there, we'll call a special meeting. If it's just going to be the, uh, the administration there with them and monitoring it, that's okay too. You tell me because enough of this nonsense. And just because you see it on Facebook, don't make it true. I'm sorry. That, that, I've had, I just had enough of that. And you won't see me on it, but everybody has my cell phone number, feel free. So I don't play with this. I don't play with people's livelihood. I don't play with people's safety and will not. Been there, done that. I know, I know precisely what police departments do from experience. And I know what dispatchers do. So it's not like we don't know what we're doing. And, and so this is the right time to address it. And we will. I hope we do it professionally and respectfully. I, I'm, I'm confident that we will. But you need to know where I come from, too. You know, and our administration has a lot of responsibility to everyone, including our police department, including our dispatchers. Someone made a comment that we're defunding the police. Baloney. Baloney. Over $3 million of our budget goes that we just approved two new cars. I love our police department. So, so just stop that. We support our police department a great, great deal. So any, any, any suggestion otherwise is simply, I say false, but that's just a plain lie. No one, no one knows how much we support our department. But when it comes to large amounts of money, we're obligated to to, to shine a light on that. We're obligated to question that. We're obligated to turn over every rock. We're obligated to look at every detail before I spend 1.8 or $2.8 million of your money. I'll tell you what, we're gonna make damn sure it's done properly if not at all. And maybe we should ask really what's broken or is it just, is it just a want and maybe just not a need. So I, I, hope, I, I hope I'm clear with everybody, but if you want, the, the number than what I do. As a matter of fact, I'll publish them. How's that? So with that being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank Aye. you. And please stay Aye. safe.